One of the best ways to get familiar with working with the tools in Lightwave is to, well, just jump in and start using them. So I thought what we could do is we could build a model, and I've chosen this uh, clothespin model. And uh, it's got some interesting shapes, and we can explore a lot of different tools uh, when, when modeling this. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start by modeling the, one of the wooden pieces. Uh, we, we need to get these two wooden pieces out of the way, and then we'll focus on the metal coil, which actually makes the clothespin work. So let's go ahead and just um, dive in and start working. So I'm going to, instead of closing this, uh, I think it's a really good idea to work with uh, reference material. So I'm just going to move it out of the way um, where you won't be able to see it, but I'll be able to see it. And every once in a while I might pull it back over. But uh, I would suggest to, to always use reference material when you can. So um, before we start, it would be helpful if we want to really get accurate if we could load in an image to, to work with. So I'm going to hit um, D for display options, go over to the backdrop tab, and I'm just going to load it up in the, uh, in the back view. And I'm going to load up, let's do the wooden side piece. Okay. And I'm just going to bring down the contrast and the brightness a little bit to work with. And I could bring up the image resolution from 512, but I'm okay if it's a little pixelated when we work. Um, but as, yeah, look, it's not pixelated. But if I got too close, it starts getting pixelated, but that's okay. Um, this, sh this should work. Now, uh, I took a pretty shoddy image. It's not perfectly, it's not a perfectly side shot, but it's close enough to work with and we can always adjust um, later. But one thing that I have to decide is, well, how am I going to start? What tools am I going to use? Now, um, we'll explore a, a couple different ways to go about doing it, but one of the first things that comes to mind is to just come over to the spline draw tool and start tracing it this way. Okay. And go all the way around. If I want a straight line, I need to put I need to put two. See how it starts curving right there? I need to put that a little closer. Okay, and I could keep going like this. And I'm just going to close this off, um, say, here. Uh, and I can freeze it. And now I've got a polygon to work with. Uh, but look at all the points. Look at all these extra points. Now I could go up and I could go and clean this up. I could come over to um, construct reduce points and that looks a little cleaner it's a little too many points got reduced so reduce points medium 36 points removed okay that's a little cleaner but if I want full control and I want to have a, a, a very clean and optimized mesh uh, and, I've, and I want to take the time to do it, well, I might go about building it different. It's not that you can't go about uh, building it this way, but let's take a look at a, another way of going about building it. Okay, And so what I'm going to do is just get that ready, go over to the Create tab, and let's try the Pin tool. Okay, So I'm going to start down here, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm going to skip over this little rounded area for right now and skip over that rounded area, skip over that rounded area. And I'm not really worried about um, the areas that are round. Okay, And just make a flat little shape like this. I'm going to take the point, the two points on the bottom, and with stretch, I'm going to stretch them so that they can be a perfectly straight line. Now, I know in my image there's all this part, but that's at an angle. So I'm kind of, let's go ahead and move that down some. I'm going to just focus on the high, the, the lighter part of the, the image. And I'll bring that up a little bit. Okay. Now, well, I, I skipped all the I skipped all these pieces. What, why, why would I do that? Well, maybe I want to um, have a little more control over how round it can be. Now, I can always go in um, and select the geometry and go over to Multiply, Add Points, <coughs> excuse me, 
and make sure no points are selected and just click some extra points on here and using the drag tool I can drag those into place but let's explore a couple different ways of doing it okay I'm gonna start with this shape right here and I'm gonna put that shape in the background come over to create disk and I'm gonna create a disk that's basically that shape okay something like that okay and K for kill I'm gonna get rid of all these points I don't need zoom in stretch it down just a bit okay so now I have some extra points to work with I'm gonna cut and paste those okay I'm gonna select this polygon I'm gonna select these points in order kinda of playing connect the dots toggle over to polygon mode go to multiply add points and click and it takes the points that I had selected and makes them part of the selection as a part of the polygon okay so I'm just gonna delete these points I used those points more as kind of like a placeholder for where I wanted the um, the newer points to be okay so now I've got that curve I'm gonna wait on this and this for right now and let's come over here and let's try that again I'm gonna go over to the disk tool kind of make that shape Okay for kill. I didn't go I didn't have to go into another layer like I did last time. I was just doing that. Sometimes it's easier for me to, to keep it organized. I'm gonna select these, select the polygon, go to multiply, add points, and there we go. Let's move over to this one. Create disk. Can I get that into place? K for kill polygons. Select the ones that I don't want. I'm actually going to take this one, move it down a bit. Okay, now I'm going to select these in order. Grab this polygon, multiply, add points. Okay and I can get rid of this point I'm gonna drag that point up a bit drag that point and get rid of this point and move this point up a bit okay so I'm getting close I've got I've got those shapes out of the way but I've got these square shapes out of the way I could do the same thing but let's try something different I'm going to go into the background layer and I'm going to draw a flat box here come over here and draw a flat box and draw a flat box okay put those in the background I'm using the apostrophe key as the uh, shortcut for swap layers and now what I want to do is, well, I just realized that I accidentally made an extra polygon there. I'm just going to delete it. Okay. Now all I'm going to do is come over to Construct, Drill, down the Z, and I'm going to use Tunnel. And it just punches that right out. Now normally I keep my, uh, my cutters just in case if I ever want to uh, come back to it. So just know that's what's in Layer 2. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have. <coughs> Excuse me. We've got pretty much the shape we need now what I like about it is if I go into wireframe we can see it's pretty clean we only have the geometry that we need um, when we were using the spline draw it was a little different setup we we had some extra geometry to work with now now would be the time that we need to decide do we add the round shape here now or do we do it um, do we do it later now what I'm gonna do is come over to multiply 
add points. No, actually, you know, I, I was going to do the thing that we did earlier, but I just realized I already, I already showed it. We could just kind of bump this a little bit, but I'm just going to grab those and delete them. Let's, let's handle that a different way. I want to explore as many, many tools as I can on this. So I'm going to go back to texture wire here. And then we need to um, extrude the, uh, the piece. So I'm going to come over to multiply, extrude. And I'm just looking at my reference image and I'll get a, we can always make this perfect by loading in an image, but I'm going to save the time and just do this. We can always change it later. Okay. So we're really close. Now, depending on how close we got to the piece would depend on, well, are we done? Uh, we, we could be, we could be done. And I just realized it is a little, it is a little wide. That's okay. I'm going to hold down control and use the stretch tool. Okay. Which is. Um, H for the shortcut key. Okay, so I'm going to start dressing this up a bit. Okay, so we realize that this is a little too sharp to make this shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to multiply rounder. Let's do in for numeric and let's change that inset and add a, a few polygons. I'm going to change that inset and we'll just go with six. Now it's pushing it away, but I'm, I'm just gonna move that back when I'm done and I'm done. So with those still selected, I'm just gonna move those into place, okay? Now, I could have done the exact same thing as I did here and depending on what I'm building, well, I might just do that. But for, for this, I just wanted to show that if you already had the piece built, um, you're, you're okay with using uh, rounder or um, several other tools to get the, the shape. Now, remember that you don't want to use rounder on a flat poly. That's why I had to wait until it was extruded. Let's grab this point and go to... Now, the interesting thing is in this photograph, it looks a little sharp, but I'm looking at my three-quarter reference, and uh, it's not so sharp. So, um, I'm going to round I'm going to round it off. So go to rounder in for numeric. Um, I'm going to change the inset a bit, something like that. Okay? And let's see if we can get away with yeah, 4 instead of 6 rounding polygons. Again, just trying to make it um, as optimized as I can. Now, I could start doing that here, but this is more of a straight line, but it's got a slight little uh, roundness to it and we're going to do that um, here in a second. Okay, so if I was building something uh, for uh, that's not going to be close to the camera, little distance objects, um, this could be fine. We could work with this. The problem is, is that we've got these sharp edges and they don't look all that great. I want to I want to dress it up. So what we want to do is add a little micro bevel to everything. And there's ways that we can go about doing that. I can just go into I could just start selecting polys and hitting B for bevel. And I could start beveling those edges. See how it catches light now? Looks much nicer. But I want to make sure that I get all the nooks and crannies on this uh, on this object. So I'm going to copy and paste to layer three. And notice that it says unnamed with a little asterisk by it. Uh, that means we haven't saved at all. And I'm a big fan of saving. So I'm going to come over to File, just save it as C pin. 001. Okay, we can, if something happens or if I want to go back, I can always do that. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to um, dress this up a bit with some, some nice edges. So again, I could just select this and hit B for bevel and get an edge on there and let's just see that. Okay, catches light, looks, uh, looks pretty nice, uh, but I want to do it to everything. Okay, well, I want to do it to everything except I'm pretty happy with the way uh, this area is rounded and some other areas around it, and I don't want to add any more geometry there. So what we can do is we can make that uh, where it's not part of the calculation. But first, let's try, instead of um, bevel, let's just try rounder in for numeric. And, well, that seems to work. Let's see. Uh, if I was in a rush, I might just... Um, say that that works for me, okay, because I got nice uh, little micro bevels on everything where it's catching light. The problem is I added geometry 
on these rounded areas and maybe I don't want to do that. So I'm going to undo and I'm going to find a way to stop it. Now the way rounders working is if I grab this polygon and this polygon it's actually looking in select points. It's actually looking in point mode. Okay, which means that yeah it'll round from this point to this point but it's also going to round from this inner point to this inner point and add an edge in there. Uh, add a, a rounded polygon in there which um, it's not really what I want to do. So what I'm going to do is break it up so that I can control where it's happening. So I'm going to grab these polys right here and I'm going to use uh, construct connect to split them so that it'll look from this point to up. Nope, this point's not selected. Okay, so it won't round, it won't try and round those polys. And um, I'll do the same thing here. Just L for connect. I'm going to do the same thing here. L. Let me get these last two. Grab these polys. L. And let me grab these polys and L. Okay, now I want it to, to grab these, um, but I just don't want it to grab the others. Now that I have those split up, I'm going to um, use Select Connect, which is Close Bracket, or View Selection Connected, and then come back and deselect the geometry I don't want to add the little micro bevel to. Okay. Almost there. And let me grab these. Okay. That should do it. Okay. Now, with that selected, I'm just taking one last look. With that selected, let's go over to Multiply, Rounder, in for numeric. And I kind of like the setting. We could adjust the, I wouldn't add more rounding polygons unless the camera is going to get right on top of this and you want to have a lot of, uh, you know, make this as smooth as possible. I just want this to catch light. So I'm not looking to have a microscopic view of this uh, clothespin. Uh, and then the inset distance, you just need to, to drop it off a little bit and uh, two millimeters is working on, on this object. Okay. So we got that nice edge. Let's take a look. See how it didn't affect any of this? It only affected the geometry that was selected. Okay, now I wanna, I don't need this extra segment in here. So I'm just gonna grab these two polys, come over to construct, reduce, band glue, and it's gonna make it one loop. So it took, it took those two rows and made them one. Just got a couple places I gotta do it. Band glue. Bang glue. Two more. Bang glue and bang glue. Now, that that extra segment in the middle wouldn't have caused any problems at render time, for surfacing, for anything. But if we're going to work on an optimized mesh, we might as well clean it up 100%. So I'm feeling pretty good about this wooden piece. I'm going to get rid of the image in the background, set it to none. Okay, and I'm feeling pretty good about our, our wooden piece, so I'm going to save. Now, I could just save right on top by hitting S, but I like saving incremental versions, so I'm going to go to Save Object As and just save this as 002. Okay, so we've got, um, if we want to make this thinner, in the end we might make it thinner, but we're going to make a wide clothespin. The good thing is, is that... Uh, there are so many different types of clothespins out there, but if we wanted to match the one in our reference picture, we'd probably make it a little thinner. So, why not? I don't want to stretch, okay? What I want to do is grab this geometry and just move it in a little bit, okay? If I stretched, I'd change the thickness of some of my little bevels. Now, I'm also seeing these extra points. Just going to get rid of those. Don't 
delete. Okay, just wanting to clean this up as much as possible. I'm going to F2 to center. And then now we need to make another wooden piece. We could go through that entire process again, uh, which in my opinion would kind of be pointless because we can come over to multiply, mirror, and just mirror it. Okay, that's shift V is the shortcut key for mirror. Okay, I'll move this down. And now we've got both wooden pieces. Now, what we have to do is rotate the piece so that we end up with what we need here, spacing for our coil. So I'm going to drop that in the background. And our coil is pretty much a circle. So I'm going to pick this as my reference. Swap layers. Grab this. And zoom in a bit. And that'll work. OK, so I can get rid of my little template. And now I've got the wooden pieces for the clothespin. Now all that's left is the metal coil. 